Hi, I'm Thomas Bowles, Prince William County Agricultural Extension Agent. Welcome to our video. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of our Wednesday classes. Today's class is on holiday plants, and our presenter is Jan Rice, who is a Prince William County Master Gardener. Jan, take it away. Good morning, everyone. This is a presentation on the ubiquitous holiday plants that we see everywhere at this time of the year. And it'll be about uh, selecting them, taking care of them, and even saving them for next year's holidays. So off we go. Oops. All right. Sorry, everyone. No, don't do this often. Okay, everyone's had a holiday plant that has ended up looking like this sad specimen. Um, what I hope to do today is show you ways that you can care for plants and keep them into the, into the future. We'll start with the holiday favorite poinsettias. These are native of Mexico. The Aztecs cultivated poinsettias to use, then they use the colorful bracts to make reddish purple dye. And they use the milky sap to treat fevers. That's not something I'm recommending, just saying that's what they did. It was brought to the US by Joel Roberts Poinsett, who was ambassador to Mexico from 1825 to 1829. The colorful parts are modified leaves or bracts. The true flowers are the yellow green objects located in the center. Contrary to popular belief, they are not poisonous, but do keep them away from small children and pets. They're not healthy to ingest. And they have a milky sap that if you're sensitive to it, it can cause irritation to the skin. Now, how do you care for them? The color lasts for six to eight weeks. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, my clock is chiming. Uh, select plants that have dark green foliage. Those with yellower leaves will probably not last as long. They're probably older and you wouldn't want those. They'll die much more quickly. They prefer a temperature between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably like most of our homes, but they're very sensitive to sudden temperature changes. So put them in a warm, sunny window or in bright, indirect light and check the moisture daily. Water as needed to prevent drying out completely. I think drying them out uh, is probably one of the major causes of poinsettias dying. So after the holidays are over, do you keep it or toss it? For many people, and I'm going to put myself in this category because I've tried to um, keep them for a second season and have been had very mixed success. It's very hard to get them to rebloom unless you have a greenhouse. But if you want to try, here's what you need to do. After the leaves have fallen, you're going to prune it to three to five inches above the soil and store it in a cool, around 60 degree Fahrenheit, well ventilated um, place. Then you water them less frequently, but again, don't let it dry out. You might even want to repot this um, even before May, the official time frame is in May, you repot in fresh soil that's growing medium. But if the soil of the medium that it's growing in doesn't look good, you may want to repot it before then. Move to a warmer location and increase the frequency of watering. After night temperatures are above 60 degrees, you move it outside into light shade. And then when it's acclimatized to the light shade, you can move it into full sun because they are full sun plants. Fertilize monthly with a soluble 20-10-20 fertilizer after the new growth reaches two to three inches. And as always, if you're going to use any kind of chemical fertilizers, read the label carefully. The instructions will be on there of everything you need to know. And it's very important before you use any chemicals that you know exactly what it's designed to do and which plants it's good for. After it's in the new growth has reached four to five inches tall, you can prune it back again to get it in a nice shape. And you can prune it once again midsummer. But after midsummer, you don't want to prune any longer, or you may not get the bracts and flowers by late December. Bring the plants inside in late September or when you, the temperatures fall below 
60 degrees Fahrenheit and reduce fertilizer. Place it in bright natural light in the daytime. Now these plants are thermophotoperiodic, which means short day plants. They produce the flowers when the days have less than 10 hours of light. They need complete darkness between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. each day from early October until the bracts show good color in about eight to 10 weeks. You can do this by covering with a box or putting in a closet or dark room, but you must remember to take it out in the morning. That's always the key. I used to forget mine, leave them inside the closet for too long. The next plant we're gonna talk about is the Thanksgiving cactus and the Christmas cactus. They are natives to the mountain forests of Southeast Brazil. They're epiphytes, which means they grow in trees and they get their water and nutrients from rain and decaying organic matter. They get filtered sunlight in their natural habitat. The Christmas cactus was actually developed in England and contrary to popular belief, is not really grown commercially you almost never find it in stores in the US. What you do find is the Thanksgiving cactus, which this picture is an example of. And you'll notice that the thylaclades or the flat blades are have sharp looking little spines on them. I have this down at the bottom, which shows you this is the Thanksgiving cactus. This is a Christmas cactus, which is very similar, but without the sharp points. And then this is something often called the Easter cactus, which has a totally different flowering, a flower, and it grows at a different time of year. So I'm not really addressing that, but those are the three basic kinds that you can, if you can find them that exist. The stems are composed of the flattened segments. As I said, they're called phylloclades, and they provide the photosynthesis for the plant. These plants can live up to a hundred years. They are non-toxic, so you don't need to worry about your pets and children. Now, how do you care for them? Place them in direct sunlight, but keep it out of the hot summer sun. Keep away from heat sources and drafts. So if you get these vent covers, you can prevent them blowing on your plants. Prefer They prefer high humidity, so you can put up saucer underneath filled with pebbles and cover it with water. Just don't let it sit in that water. Um, the evaporation from that water increases the humidity around your plants. Optimal temperatures are at night a minimum of 50 degrees. That doesn't mean you have to have your house at 50 degrees. I have lots of these and I, my, I keep the temperature around 60 at night. And in the daytime, highs of 68 are the kind of best for its growing. Um, water, when the top inch of the soil feels dry to the touch, you can stick your finger in to test it, or I have these sticks, as you see here, and I just poke them in the plant because it's a lot easier when I put my finger in, I pull out a whole chunk of soil, I get soil everywhere, but this stick will show me if it's dry when it goes in and comes out, then I know I've got to water it. This is another one of my holiday cactuses. Um, they do need regular watering because they are not true cacti. They, you need to soak the soil until the water runs through the pot's drainage hole, and then you drain it well before you put it back in its saucer in its original spot. Um, use water-soluble flowering houseplant fertilizer June through August. Again, as always, follow the directions completely on the container. These are some of the different colors you can get in, in the, which is the, usually the Thanksgiving cactus. Um, the temperature and day length are bloom triggers, just like poinsettias. If you have night temperatures are very cold, so say you have a cold basement or storage area and you can put it in that, um, it will bloom in five to six weeks, even without 12 hours of darkness. But What's most common, and in, this is my house, I don't put them in a cold storage. The night temperatures of 60 to 65 will need 12 to 15 hours of complete darkness for six weeks. They're unlikely to bloom at all if the night temperatures are over 65. 
So I don't put mine in a closet. I tend to forget them and I don't have enough closets for all my plants. So what I do is just have, they're in a room where at night I keep the lights off. So water less frequently during the fall when the buds are developing. And when flower buds form, raise the temperature and increase your watering. After plants stop blooming, keep in a cool, sunny location out of direct light. And I'm going to add, this is the official stance, but you probably have to play around with where your plants are happiest. And when I was in a house that did not have windows that had e-glass that protects them, um, I couldn't put them in very bright windows because it was too much light. But in my current house, I have the windows that have the argon in between. And so a lot of the UV rays are filtered out. So I can keep them in a very bright window and it doesn't affect them at all. Um, take it outside in the summer, place in light shade until the fall to promote new shoots. If the buds drop, it may mean it needs repotting or you don't have enough light or the temperature is too high. We recommend repotting every three years with cactus potting soil. It's really important that you use this because the cactus potting soil allows the water to drain more freely. It doesn't get as soggy as other um, potting soils do, but it does prefer to be root bound. So you wanna be careful not to put it in too big a pot. So if you have a 10 inch pot, you wanna move it to like a 12 inch pot, not to an 18 inch pot because it, probably will stall its growth. Now, pests and diseases, it suffers from fungus gnats. They're the bane of my existence and thrips. So let the soil dry out between waterings so that you don't have as many. It can also suff suffer from basal stem rot, impatience necrotic spot virus, Phytophthora and Pythium root rot. Um, the best way to prevent the rotting of stems is just don't overwater. And that's, I can't say that enough for any plants, just don't overwater. The fungus gnats, I swear, even sterile potting soil, sometimes you get fungus gnats and just letting it dry out helps. So if you wanna prune your cactus after it's flowered, you can prune it to encourage branching. Use a small sharp pruner or a knife and cut the plants where two cladophils join and then it will start producing one or two nucleophils where it was cut and increase its branching. Um, if you want to propagate them, these things are so easy to propagate. You just take off one of those phylloclades and you dip the base in water and then rooting hormone and then stick it into some potting medium. Make sure it's well draining. Again, you don't want it to be too wet. Now this you want in slightly warmer temperatures, 70 to 80 degrees to promote the growth. Keep it moist, but not wet. And that means you probably have to water very little, but frequently. Um, and after two weeks, you can use a spoon to gently lift out the cuttings and check for new roots. If the roots have formed, you can plant it in cactus soil and start your new plant. And once it's rooted, then water it and place in a bright window. Next one on our list, another favorite of mine, the Kalanchoe. This is a genus of about 125 species of tropical succulent flowering plants in the family Cresselacea. It's native to Madagascar and tropical Africa, and it's among the first plants that was sent into space on a 1971 resupply mission to the Soviet Salute 1. This is toxic to pets, so keep this well out of reach of any of your pets that might tend to chew on the leaves of a plant. And this is hardy, not in Prince William, we're zone seven, but in some areas of the country, it's hardy from if your zone is 10 to 12. Kalanchoe care, place in a warm, sunny window away from drafts. It needs bright light to bloom. It likes temperatures between 55 and 80 degrees. It's very forgiving. Allow the soil to dry between waterings. Again, the same as with the holiday cactus. Avoid overwatering because its roots will rot easily. If it's in low light, it gets very spindly. It has long, thin stalks, but you can just cut it back and move it into a brighter light window. This is also photoperiodic. It needs a dark period to promote flowering. But again, I have 
I have grown these for years and I've never put one in a closet. I just keep them in a darker room at night and it seems to do just fine. Should you keep it or toss it? Um, you can keep it, replant it in cactus potting soil. I have to say that I tend to, anytime I get a plant from a, either a nursery or the grocery store, I repot it right away because it, it tends, to, tends to help with the growth. Feed once a month while blooming, pinch back or deadhead the flowers to encourage more blooming and reduce the water after you deadhead because that seems to spark its growth. It will rebloom during the shorter days and longer nights between fall and spring. Um, to propagate, you can just place a leaf or a stem cutting water until the roots form and then plant in, cactus, in cactus soil. Now this plant is prone to powdery mildew. I actually lost all of mine recently, about a year ago, to powdery mildew that I couldn't. I tried to get rid of it and it just kept going and I was so afraid it would go to the other plants. So you do want to watch out for that and you can bring powdery mildew in and not know it when you take them outside in the summer and it catches it from some of the plants that have it outside. Next on the list, the cyclamen. The cyclamen is a genus of 23 species. They're native to Europe, the Mediterranean and the Middle East. The leaves, the flowers, and the roots grow from a tuber. The leaves come up in the autumn, they grow through the winter, and they die back in the spring. In its native habitat, in a dry Mediterranean summer, it will just go dormant during the hot times. It likes bright, indirect light, water when the surface is dry, but you need to keep the water off the tuber crown so it doesn't rot. So the easiest way to do that is just immerse the base of the pot in room temperature water until the top of the mix is damp, and then allow it to drain completely before you put it back in its saucer. It likes cool night temperatures of 50 to 60 degrees. So should you keep or toss it? The experts say it's difficult to keep growing it indoors and you might just want to toss it, but I've kept them before. And if you keep, you treat it like you do any of your bulbs. After it stops blooming, gradually reduce the water and allow it to dry, but not shrivel up. You remove the corn from its potting mix and then store in a cool place about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Your garage would probably do fine. In peat moss or vermiculite to prevent it drying out. In June, repot in fresh potting mix, leaving the upper half of the corm above the soil to prevent rotting. Then water it. You can move it outside in the shade three weeks after you have repotted it. Fertilize two times a month with soluble fertilizer. Again, read the directions. Then bring it indoors before the first frost to a cool, sunny window. Paper whites, very um, beautiful flowers, but warning here, if you don't like strong scents, this has a very strong pervasive scent. You put the bulbs in a deep container, which helps keep them upright. Fill the bottom with smooth pebbles or stones. Then weld the bulbs into the rocks, keeping half of the bulb above, above the rocks and out of the water. Then pour water over the rocks and this is my favorite thing. You can add vodka to help keep them upright because it kind of pickles them, um, but I'm not using my good clarity vodka for that. Um, keep basal area wet. Place in a cool location, 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit until the growth begins. Then you can bring it out of its cool spot and turn it regularly to prevent phototropism, which of course is leaning towards the light. And once it's blooming, remove from direct sunlight to extend the life of the blooms. After blooming, just toss them. They are difficult to get to regrow a second year. The amaryllis, beautiful plant that you see so many of this time of the year. It's named for a Greek myth. It's a native to South America and the Caribbean. In nature, it would really bloom in spring and summer but we force them inside so they'll bloom during the holiday times. 
10 million amaryllis bulbs are imported every year from the Netherlands and South Africa. There are 600 names vari named varieties. They're tender perennials. They're hardy outdoors only in zones 9 to 11. So this is one where you can take out in summer and bring in in the fall. A bulb can live for up to 75 years. These are mildly toxic to pets, so if you have pets, um, keep them out of their reach. Planting and care. Pick large, firm bulbs that are free from cuts or bruises. The larger the bulb, the bigger the flowers and more flower stalks you'll have. Select a heavy, wide bottom pot to provide more support. Choose a pot that's two inches wider than the diameter of the bulb. Now, multiple bulbs in a container, you'll need to keep them one inch apart, so you'll need a bigger pot. High quality sterile growing mix to avoid those rotten fungus gnats. Planting and care. Moisten the soil, then fill the pot one half full, set a bulb on top, and then add more soil to leave just the top third exposed. Then water it well to settle in the pot, making sure the water drains out. Again, you don't want it soggy, just moist. So this is only going to need about a quarter cup of water a week. Don't overwater. It likes cool temperatures with bright indirect light. Um, in my house, I keep it in a cooler place because it tends to bloom better. Um, if you know that the heat register, don't put it near a heat register because that's really going to probably prevent it from blooming. Expect one to three stems, each with three to five flowers. The stems develop at once or they emerge one at a time over two to three weeks. Rotate and stake the stems to keep them straight. Should you keep it or toss it? I would say keep it after the flowers fade, cut off the bloom stalk, but let the foliage continue to grow. Put it in a sunny spot inside and water it regularly. And again, not too much, that quarter cup will probably be just fine. In the spring, move it outside, but keep it in afternoon shade. It doesn't want the hot sun. Um, some morning sun is just fine. Fertilize it monthly until September. Then bring the bulb inside, stop watering, and allow the foliage to completely die. I usually stick mine in the garage. Reduce water, then store the bulb in a cool, dry place for two to three months. Then you have to remember to get it out of the garage. When the bulb begins to sprout, increase the sun, the water, and it should flower again in about six to eight weeks. I often set mine to bloom in February because it's things are dull and dead in February. Okay, rosemary. This is another popular plant this time of year. It's originally from the Mediterranean, which means it likes hot and dry, so it doesn't do well indoors. Um, due to the low light and low humidity. Um, after the last frost, move it outdoors. It's hardy in zone seven to 10. And if you're in Prince William County, we are zone seven. So it is hardy outside, but you may need to protect it from wind and other um, adverse conditions. It grows best in well-drained, slightly acidic soil, a pH of six to seven. We always recommend for outdoor gardening that you check that you get your soil tested because knowing the pH is very important. Some plants just really will not grow if the pH is not correct. These are full sun plants. They like six or more hours of sun. And I have to say, I would go with eight or more hours of sun to be sure that it gets enough sunlight. It doesn't need a lot of water, only needs to be watered every one to two weeks if you don't get any rain and you need to allow the soil to dry out between waterings because it suffers from root rot. And this would really mean that you might want to grow it outside in a pot or in a raised bed, because when we have our frequent rain events and it rains two inches and then it gets very sodden, needs to have a way for that soil to drain. And if your soil is very clay, it's a lot of clay that's not going to dry out very well. It does not need fertilizing. So can you propagate it? Yes, it's pretty easy to propagate. You just clip a three inch branch from the stem of a vigorously growing plant, trim off the lower leaves 
for one and a half inches off that stem that you've cut. Plant one or two cuttings in a three inch pot. Um, dip it in some rooting hormone and then poke it in some soilless growing medium. And then water them, place them in a window with indirect sunlight and temperatures of 60 to 70 degrees. And after about eight weeks, the cuttings will root and then you can transplant them to wherever you want them outside, share them with a friend. This is a new plant that I didn't know about until I researched this presentation. I, this, these plants were in Safeway when I took the picture, um, but you can get them in any nursery. I'm not advocating Safeway. This frosty fern is a native of Africa and nearby islands. It's a spike moss in the lycopod group it's related to ferns. It is not a true moss. Water twice a week when actively growing and reduce to once a week when the growth slows. Keep the soil moist, not wet. Same advice for most plants. Water from the bottom of the plant. Here again, you can do that. Dip it in some warm, lukewarm water and let it absorb from the bottom. These don't like direct sunlight, so you want to keep these out of a sunny window. Don't put it in a sunny window. Fertilize weekly with a diluted high nitrogen fertilizer while it's growing. And the instructions didn't say specifically how far to dilute it, but I think if you probably had like a quarter strength and then see if that works well and test a little higher um, percentage if it doesn't seem to be growing well. You want to increase the humidity around the plant and keep the temperatures on the low side to keep the tips white. It will turn completely green if it gets too dry or the temperatures um, too high. You can grow it outdoors. It grows on rich, well-draining soil in part shade from zone six to nine. So you could grow it outside here in Virginia, here in Prince William County. The Norfolk Island Pine. This one, we see it in the stores as a tiny little baby, but it's a native of the Norfolk Island in the South Pacific between Australia and New Zealand. And in its native habitat, it looks like this. It grows up to 200 feet and a diameter of nine to 10 feet. It's not a true pine at all. It's a member of a prehistoric family of conifers, our Cariacea, it's widespread, it was widespread during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, but it died out in the Northern Hemisphere along with the dinosaurs. But it still grows in the Southern Hemisphere and you can find it in the uh, in regions of the South Pacific. It was introduced to Europe in 1774 by Captain James Cook. Now this little baby, this is what it looks like when you see it in the store. These require very minimal care. It likes bright light, so a southwest facing window is ideal. It likes 16 hours of light a day. Leave the light on in a darker room if you're going, so you don't want this in the same room with your poinsettias, which you're trying to get to bloom. You turn them weekly to keep it growing straight. It likes a temperature of 60 to 70 degrees, 72 degrees at, in the daytime. At night, it doesn't like lower than 50 to 55. And no one's house is gonna go that low, so you're probably fine. Um, what this does mean that if you take it outside, if the temperature is gonna dip below 55, you wanna bring it inside. It likes very high humidify, humidity. So a humidifier or a saucer with wet stones is a good idea. Avoid drafts and cover the vents. It, you don't need to fertilize this at all because that keeps it growing, keeps the growth from getting leggy and helps it grow more slowly, which as this becomes a huge tree is what you want. Keep the soil moist, but never wet and don't let it sit in water to prevent root rot. So this was my Norfolk Island pine in the 1980s. Um, I was amused at myself. I, I had this plant for well over 10 years and this was the only picture I could find of it. Um, it. Wet soil, age, or low light may cause the lower limbs to drop off, which apparently mine did. And repot it regularly before it becomes root bound. Watch for roots that might be growing out of the bottom of the pot. It has few pests or problems. I recommend getting um, 
it gets very heavy as it gets bigger and you have to put it in a big pot. So keep it on a roller tray, which helps you to move it, to rotate it around, to keep, the keep it growing straight. Um, decorate only with cool LED lights and lightweight ornaments. In this era, we didn't have LED lights, so I didn't have any lights on it, but I would put those satin ornaments on it because they were very light and didn't bend the branches. This poor baby bit the dust when it reached the ceiling, it bent over in a shepherd's crook curve, and I decided I just couldn't keep it any longer. It, but it will grow for a long time inside. Now, sometimes you want to have a tree to plant in your yard, and you might want to have it as a Christmas tree for a while and then take it outside and plant. You can do this, but you need to be very careful if you want it to survive. So the first thing you need to do is a little research and pick a tree that will thrive in your area. As I've said before, Prince William is zone seven, but temperatures vary in different parts of the county. If you're down in Woodbridge, closer to the coast, your temperatures may be warmer. Um, up in the mountains, you've got different elevations. So you do want to do a little research before you purchase a tree. You wanna get one that's under five feet with a minimum of a 22 inch diameter root ball. Smaller root balls equal poor, must, poor moisture uptake by the roots. So you really don't want anything that's poorly, um, that's poorly grown to begin with. You want something so it'll give you a good strong start. You want to check the specific conditions. These three pines are ones that might do well in Prince William, the shortleaf pine, the eastern white pine, the Virginia pine. Now, the eastern white pine can have a limited lifespan when it's in hotter weather. So western Prince William County probably has a better chance. I had eastern white pines growing at my home when I lived in Fairfax County, and they did just fine. So if you want to take a chance on it, it might do well. We don't recommend the Fraser fir, blue spruce, Leland cypress, or Austrian pine because, again, these are ones that have either lots of pests or they don't do well in our hot summers. That being said, I had several Bruce, blue spruce live Christmas trees in my lifetime that I planted, and they did just fine. So. If you want to take a chance, just know that their lifespan might be shortened because they don't like hot nights in the summer. Consider the mature size of the tree, location and type of soil before you select your tree. You want to make sure here again, you might want to get a soil test to see, um, and it's probably late in the holiday season to get that soil test done, but that's a good place to start to see if your tree will survive. Do consider the weight of a potted tree, because if you're going to move it in and out of the house, you don't want one that's too heavy to move. And most nurseries will hold a tree for you, so you can pick it up like right before holiday season, and then um, you don't have to store it outside too long. If you do pick it up early, leave it in a sheltered area under a covered porch or a large tree to let it adjust to its new environment. After, before you bring it inside, hose the tree down because you want to eliminate any pests that might be growing, those fungus gnats again. Shake off any loose needles. Leave it in its original container until you're ready to plant it outdoors to prevent the root shock that it would have if you plant, replanted it twice. Put it in a decorative container without a drainage hole or if you don't only have one with drainage hole, line the pot with heavy plastic. You do not want a soaky wet rug under your tree. And cover the soil with mulch or moss, which helps slow the water evaporation. These trees dry out incredibly fast when they're indoors. Limit the time indoors to seven to 10 days maximum. And I'm even gonna say I'd limit it to five to seven. 10 would be probably pushing it. Um, what happens is that it breaks dormancy. It thinks when it comes to this nice warm house that winter's over and it's time to start growing again. And once it's broken dormancy, it will most likely die when transplanted out and you have a severe cold snap. 
It likes cool temperatures, temperatures and bright light, so keep it away from vents. Um, water daily, potted trees dry out incredibly quickly. Cover the root ball with ice cubes. This will melt slowly and for better water absorption by roots. You can actually do this with any plant. Put some ice cubes on top of the soil, it melts down. My understanding is orchids. This works well for orchids too. Do not fill the container to the top with water. Put only an inch or two at the bottom of the tub so the roots will take up that water that they can breathe. A full-size tree can take up to a gallon of water a day. These ornament, little ornamental trees like these, these were at BJ's when I took the picture, it's grown in a greenhouse and they're not going to be winter hardy. So just keep them inside until the last frost is over and then treat them like a houseplant. You can take them out in the summer and inside in the fall. Um, I, again, I would recommend repotting because they probably don't have a lot of soil in the pot. Trees set outside after severe cold and breaking dormancy, as I said in the previous slide, can have foliage burn and bud damage if, even if they don't die. So it's always important to limit the time indoors unless you're going to treat it like a house plant and bring it in and out during the winter. Again, use only cool LED lights and lightweight ornaments if you're going to decorate it. Now to the planting. We've got a video on our um, Prince William County YouTube site that gives you a whole lot more details, but I'll just run through the basics of it. You've got to select a location that has enough room for the mature tree. You dig a hole two to three times wider and slightly shallower than the root ball. Take everything off the root ball, burlap, wire, pins, tags, anything. Some people say you can leave the burlap, but most burlap is treated and it may not rot. So you do want to take it off. And then you cut or loosen any massed coiled roots that are outside the root ball so that the roots can spread out. Place it in the hole, backfill the soil, tamp down, and water. Level the surrounding soil so the top of the roots, I'm sorry, with the top of the roots, but do not cover the top of the root ball. Spread two to three inches of mulch over the disturbed area, but keep the mulch away from the trunk and off the top of the root ball. Water it regularly after planting, two times a week, one time a week, all winter. Sorry, my, my phone went off. So planting living trees. This is what a mature pine tree looks like. Um, don't fertilize or stake it unless you absolutely have to. Um, if the ground is frozen, you can store it in an unheated building outside protection from the wind and remember to water it. That's the biggest thing. You've got to keep it watered all winter. In order for the tree to survive, you've got to know the soil management. You want to mulch it, proper irrigation, etc. And you must manage the insects and diseases. Many of these trees are prone to insects and diseases. So know what they are and you'll have to, you can, you can contact our help desk for more help with that when, when you've actually planted the tree. Trees we planted outside may not survive or grow well if the tree species is not adapted to the climate. Firs and spruce, again in Virginia, sometimes don't do well, but they may survive for 10 years. They may not. Um, it depends on if you want to take a chance on it. If it's kept inside too long and loses its winter hardiness, if it's too large and it suffers transplant shock, or if it dries out between waterings, even once stresses a tree. I'm gonna go over just some general indoor plant care. This is a recap of things I've said earlier, but you wanna choose plants that are free of pests and diseases. Examine that plant carefully. It may, you may be carrying something in that will affect the other house plants in your home. So you wanna to try to avoid that. Yet be sure it has healthy foliage, new growth, it doesn't need to be in full flower. Uh, poinsettias probably do are, but others, it's fine just to have buds on them. They will flower it in their own time. So 
It's easier to select a plant to match the conditions in the home rather than change the conditions at home to match the plant. In cold weather, cover or wrap when transporting. Don't use an unheated trunk. So if it's very, very cold, make sure you've got that plant wrapped up with some warm air as a layer between it and the outside. Most plants like bright indirect light, sunny windows or fluorescent lamps are useful to keep the lighting to the level you want. Um, you need to acclimatize to light differences. So for instance, if you're moving a plant from a very low light area, it's not doing well, you don't want to take it directly into a very bright window. You kind of move it gradually over a few weeks because plants produce different leaves during in bright light than they do in low light. The temperature ranges 65 to 75 degrees is usually fine in the daytime, 50 to 60 at night. Most of us don't keep our houses that cold at night. And they're usually OK as long as they're not in, sitting next to a heat register that's pumping out the heat. Um, keep out of a draft. And plants are like pets. They require constant care. Watering. So you can run a humidifier to keep the air around it and get one of those cheap ones at one of the drugstores and just that misting keeps the plants healthier. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can take a tray, come fill it with pebbles, then cover that with water and that increases the humidity. You'll probably have to replace the water every day. Um, misting with a little plant mister is not going to increase the air humidity. It's not bad for the plant, it's good for it. It kind of wets the leaves, but it doesn't increase the overall humidity around your plant. If the soil feels dry and the container feels light, it's time to water it. Keep soil evenly moist. Can't say this often enough, the roots will rot when overwatered. In fact, it's often easier for a plant to recover from too little water than too much water. Place it in a sink or tub. And this is sort of the easiest way, although I have some plants that are in such huge pots that I, I'm not lifting and carrying them to the tub every week. Um, you water until it drains out the bottom of the pot, then allow it to drain well. This will re remove excess salts and fertilizer, especially if you got overzealous with the fertilizer. Use room temperature water when you can. Rainwater and well water without additives are actually the best because they don't injure sensitive plants. But for those of us like me with city or county tap water, just let it sit overnight. The chlorine and the fluoride will dissipate somewhat. So, and many plants, they become acclimatized to those chemicals and it's not in large enough concentrations to hurt them. But it is usually best to leave the water sitting out. I take empty jugs that I've because I clean with vinegar. When they're empty, I rinse them out because so there's no vinegar. But those are, pot, those are jugs that won't have any other chemicals in them besides the vinegar. So it's easy for me to um, fill them with water. And then I just leave them out to actually for weeks and then rotate the water. Um, water softener treated water can have sodium in it that burns plants. Um, I will say that I had softener treated water in my previous home, and I use it because it's the only water I had unless I was collecting rainwater. But if you do use it, then you may want to um, make sure that the water flows out freely to allow it to, to, to keep that sodium from accumulating in the plant. All right, so you've kept your plant through the holidays. You took it outside in the summer, and now it's time to bring it back inside. You do not want to bring pests inside with it. So inspect your plants carefully. If you find any pests, remove them or treat it. Prune any disease, broken or dead branches. Remove any debris from the soil surface because that debris is a hiding place for insects and pests. That works very well if outside for the plants, for your trees and plants outside. That debris is good for your soil, but it's not good to bring it inside with you. Make sure the container is draining freely. Wash the outside of the pot to remove any insect, eggs, salts, and soil. This is often when I'll repot my plants because that gives me a chance to wash that pot inside and out and make sure there's nothing hiding. 
Oh, my dreaded fungus gnats. They thrive so much in wet soil. So over, avoid overwatering, allow the soil to dry, dry out between waterings. I know I've said that about 15 times in this presentation, but I can't say it often enough. Um, if you really have an infestation of something in the soil, you can remove it completely from the soil, wash off the roots, leave them to soak, don't let it dry out, and then repot in clean in a clean pot with fresh sterile potting soil. You can use a light bleach solution on the pots, um, immerse them in that, clean the pots well. And then I think it's a one part bleach to um, nine or 10 parts water, but you can look that up easily um, on the internet. So resources that I used for this presentation, um, I created a bibliography and you can get it by request at, by emailing mastergardener at pwcgov.org. Um, it was too much on a slide for you to collect. It was so many different resources, but you can also just search the name of your plant any plant actually, whether it's a holiday plant or not, put the individual name of the plant in the search engine and then a space and dot edu. And then you will come up with resources that are scientifically based and not just somebody's information, random information on the internet. That video on the care and planting of trees is on our Prince William Master Gardener website. Again, if you can't capture this from the slide presentation, you can email us at mastergardener at pwcgov.org and we will send you the link. Um, I got the information from this from a lot of different cooperative extension sites because it's very interesting. Different sites provide you with slightly slight variations in information. Again, if anything, you have any questions, contact us at mastergardener at pwcgov.org. We have another presentation in January um, and we can send you information on how to, um, how to register for that. And I leave you with this. If of thy mortal goods thou art bereft and from thy slender store two loaves alone to thee are left, sell one and with the dole, buy hyacinths to feed the soul. Life is short, buy plants and enjoy them. Thank you very much. If there are any questions, I'm happy to take questions. So the only questions, and we got those answered, but I'll answer them again just for um, people who may have come late. Um, one was about uh, how do you keep your Christmas trees fresh, which would be just to make sure they're watered and either include a little bit of sugar or flower fresh, which you can get from a florist. Um, that will help them last longer, but really making sure they're hydrated is, is really important. Um, and then the other one, let's see, it was about, um, rosemary and someone had asked about protecting, uh, the rosemary cause it's outside in a raised bed. Um, so generally, and this assumes that you are in uh, Northern Virginia, generally rosemary can handle our, temp our winter temperatures outside. It seems like once in a decade, once every seven years, something like that, um, we run into an issue of, of having a severe enough winter that we need to do something to protect. Um, I, had a, I had a whole hedge of rosemary that unfortunately was devastated by a particularly brutal winter. Um, so really the best thing to do is, is while the ground isn't frozen, make sure it gets watered. And then when it, the ground freezes, you want to protect it somehow from the wind because the, like all evergreens, um, the wind can can pull water out of the leaves. We have the same problem with pine trees and spruce and all of that, um, which is why you should always try and water your evergreens up until the ground freezes in the winter. Um, but with the rosemary, you can cover that with burlap and that will usually give you enough protection. Um, if, 
there's heavy snow, make sure that you cover it and then knock that snow off um, as soon as you can. And that usually will protect the rosemary. Rosemary can handle a little bit of snow even if it's not protected, but um, it's really about the temperature, how cold it gets and how long it stays that temperature. That, that's what you have to worry about. Um, let's see. Someone said they missed poinsettia care. Can you go over it briefly? You want me to run back to that slide, Thomas? Sure. Okay. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> okay. So you again the temperature is important 65 to 75 degrees it can be sensitive to sudden temperature changes uh, it likes a warm sunny window or bright indirect light moisture here is probably very key keeping that soil moist but not over wet and poinsettias because they have very little soil in the original pot they come in or it's really a soil that's growing medium you want to make sure that it doesn't dry out and then if you want to keep it to grow next year, that it's kind of tough to do, but you can. So after the leaves have fallen off, you prune it to three to five inches, then you're going to store it in a cool place. And then in May, repot it in some fresh growing medium, and then move to a warmer location, increase the waterings, um, and you can move it outside into light shade and then gradually move it into full sun as it acclimatizes and fertilize it monthly and being careful to pay attention to the directions and then prune it a couple of times to make it grow in a rounded shape. Otherwise it can get leggy. Um, you stop pruning in early September and then bring it inside in late September before it, the temp night temperatures get too cold for it. And then place it in bright light. It's um, it's a short day plant, so you're going to have to put it, have 10 hours, less than 10 hours of light, and then put it in darkness at night. It, if you don't want to put it in a closet, just make sure it's a room that doesn't, you're not turning on, you don't have the lights on all evening. I think that was. And I, I would w add one more thing to that. You really want to keep those dark um, poinsettias are typically sold by a lot of ag schools. And I know of at least one school that lost their entire crop. Well, I shouldn't say lost. They had the flowering bit ruined by indirect light from their football field. <laughs> um, so you really, really need to keep these as dark as possible for less than 10 hours or for what would that be 14 hours or more a day. Yeah, it's, these are probably the trickiest ones to try and turn, get them to turn red. I, I think I've tried it several times and with very <laughs> modest success. I don't even bother anymore. It's, you know, they're so prolific at this time of the year and they're inexpensive. And, you know, if, if it's something you want to try, go for it. But I don't do it anymore. <laughs> Any other questions, Thomas? Um, let's see. Is there a place close to Woodbridge where we can cut down a tree, a Christmas tree? Um, legally? <laughs> uh, I don't know of any places that are close to Woodbridge. I think most of the, the cut your own Christmas tree stuff is in the western part of the county or the perhaps down in Stafford. The closest thing is in Noakesville. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a Evergreen Acres in Noakesville may still have Christmas trees. I cut one yesterday, but I had to go up to Loudoun County. Most places are closed or will be closed after this weekend is what I found out. Yeah, the cut your own growers tend to have a, a relatively short window um, right before the holidays. They close down. Um, just to make sure that they have time to check their stock and, and repair any potential damage um, that was done either to the ground or to other trees with people traipsing up and down in their property. So, 
I think that is our last question. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you, and we will see you with our next uh, with our next presentation, which will be in early January. Until then, have a happy holiday, and uh, we'll see you next time.